What's up, fight fans? It's Sunday, and it's time for another exciting episode of Sunday Night Fight. I'm Ami Politi Funk, and I am here with my right hand man from Wales, Ipkai Fung. How you doing, Ipkai? I'm doing fine. Nice and sunny here. Nice and warm for a change. It's going to be like that for about uh, another two days, then it's going to go back to your regularly scheduled five degrees and rain. <laughs> so nice to enjoy it, enjoy it while it's about. Well, there's it's nothing but good vibes here in Berlin. This town has got World Cup fever. Our, our boys in the red, gold, and black are through to the semifinals. They play against Brazil on Tuesday. People here are going nuts. We've got this fan mile down by Brandenburg Tor with literally millions of Germans go to hang out there. You can get wursts and pretzels and beer, and they've got just like screen after screen after screen. Like every every like hundred meters down Unter den Linden, they have another one of these LED screens, and they've got it all on chains on these towers, and they like they hoist the screen up, and they and everybody. So it's just like you know block after block after block of of, of thousands of. Uh, you know, uh, foosball, uh, lunatics. So everybody here is in a really great mood. I'm in a really great mood. I'm very much looking forward to um, witnessing these special Western Front Armies games from, can we say, Ipkai, hands down, that these are the two ble- best Company of Heroes 2 players in the world right now? Yeah, I think you, I think it's safe to say that. It's pretty safe to say. We got we got on one hand we got the the Alienware Arena North American Cup winner and Sunday Night Fight season five finalist from Canada OMG Pop versus the European Cup winner and SNF quarter finalist but just like ladder dominator for the past few months um, otherwise known as Darth Vader it's Jeslin from Spain these two guys. You gotta fear them when you might uh, meet them on the ladder. Let's have a look, shall we, at their player cards. Yeah, let's go to them. All right, so first of all, US, who's USA, who is this guy? Who is this? That is uh, Mr. OMG Pop. Um, that's, that's his game card. However, though, the person in the, in the picture, that is actually Robert Oppenheimer, uh-huh. who is the inventor of the atomic bomb. Manhattan Project. Possibly a distasteful avatar, I would say, but you know, <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever you choose to put in there, you know, that's that's your choice. I suppose it's quite it's quite vague enough that people won't get it straight away. I'm glad that uh, that you are, uh, did your homework and figured out who that was because I was curious. Um, I, you know, if I, right now I'm reading the right stuff, which is really intense. So like after Oppenheimer yeah. and Manhattan Project and the and the atom bombs. Um, then, you know, it became like a race for who can get into space. And I'm, I'm reading uh, the right stuff about Chuck Yeager and all of these like insane pilots. And it's just really inspiring. The language in that book is fantastic. If you've only seen the movie and you've never read the book, you should also look into it because it's, it's, it's actually hilarious, but it's dealing with life and death at every, every corner. All right, look back to Company of Heroes 2. Look at these guys' stats. We have the number one ranked. U.S. Forces player in the world right now. He's 40-1, and one, and I guess his last game was a loss. Who did he lose to? He lost to uh, a guy called Yezi Wen um, on Samoski. Uh, he was playing as Over Commander West. Uh, and he USF. was using a... Oh, oh Yezi Wen was playing OKW. OK, yeah, Yezi Wen was okay. playing, yeah. Okave. And um, I believe uh, Pop was surprised that because um, what Yezi Wen was doing, he was using this uh, exploit to clear units out of garrisons using the Puma aim shot ability, right. which I have asked, and it is an exploit, and it won't be around for much longer. Okay, so, get that, so that will be fixed, and he should get a cre- he should get a credit here because forty and zero looks looks really sweet. But hey, forty and one, good enough. Still for the good. First spot. Yeah. Look at him with the original factions. He's got both of the bronze medals, and I'm sure that if he uh, spammed out some more games, he could crank those up too. He's been playing some um, two player AT with Ciez. And uh, they've got some decent stats. They're, they're top 100 as allies and axes. And then uh, he doesn't play a lot of just random rank. Of course, none of these top 1v1 players do. Let's move on over to Jezelin, shall we? Here we have Jezelin, his player card. And he's got this crazy fist for, an, for his Steam icon. And you can see, uh, you know, these guys, Prestige 1, that means they're, it's like 100 
that's like level 100 plus this. So he's like 158. And then Pop, Pop is 147. So you can see just how much time they've put in. And if you look at Jeslin's card, he's third as Okave, which is pretty impressive because I think they're the most difficult faction to figure out at the oh, moment. That's right. That's right. It's quite hard because, um, like I was saying, you've, you've got limited fuel, limited ammo. So every time you um, purchase something with fuel or ammo, you have to make sure that it's a wise purchase. Otherwise, it'll come and bite you in the in the behind you yeah, know, if like you don't do it correctly. One no. mistake with fuel and uh, that's your throat cut. Um, and, but look at Jeslin, man. As far as the, the vanilla Co2 factions, if you want to call them that, with Soviets and Oster, he's got both number one spots. Yeah, there's some really good win ratio as well. You know, nearly 90% for the Ost here and dude, dude, uh, 87 come on, 98%, for the Soviets. Really good. Dude, 98%. Or am I looking? Oh, no, I'm looking in the wrong place. I'm looking at his two-player two AT. He's been playing games yeah. with Milk Please. And, you know, this is another ladder that is, uh, you know, that's respectable. The two-player so ranged shocked, team man. ladder. They got both spots, man. They got number one allies and number one axis. So they are the 2v2 team to beat. Um, Jeslin and Milk Please. Yeah, that 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 um that ladder, the two v two ladder, is full of sharks. So it's really popular mode, probably more so than one v one. And you've got a lot of really strong teams. I would love that. to so see really some good. of those top teams get matched up. Uh, are there any like two v two cups coming down the pipe at ESL by any chance? Uh, yes, yes, there is the summer cup. Um, I I made a post in the forums, in the event forums, in on Uh That gives you all the details. I think the, it starts on the 24th of July. So that's, um, you've got plenty of time to sign up for that. It's one match a week, nothing that big. You know, not asking, not big ask of you guys. 32 teams, uh, one game a week. So, you know, it's really flexible. So you can get all your players in order, all your arrangements in order. It gives you plenty of time to organize matches. Because I know 2v2 is quite hard logistically to arrange matches. You yeah. know, even if you don't want to play all of the best of three at one go, you can always agree really? to split them up too. That's weird. Yeah, you can do that if I you don't want think, to. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that. I think you I know, wouldn't recommend. it's a match. It's one thing. Get it done all in one sitting. It's, you know, yeah, it take that long. Yeah, so it's, it's, over, it's over five weeks, basically, because it's five rounds. Cool. So... You know, and then there'll be, there'll be some good matches. The 1v1, um, the signups are also open for the 1v1 Summer Cup as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that one, the, the signups close next Thursday that's coming up. So you better sign up quickly for that. Uh, winner right. gets a nice little There's badge. There's your tip, everybody. Yep. Get in there. Um, yeah, and you want you just want to you want to make yourself known to ESL, right? Ipkai, right? Ipkai? Yeah, yeah, right? you do. You want to make I mean, yourself known. I mean, right? I want to say that there will be some prizes as well. There will be, I know, ESL Premium, which is quite nice. Uh, gets you some nice badges. Gets rid of the ads on the site as well. That's yeah. not what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. We're, it's we're like, known because I'm like drooling for more events. I just want more events. I want this scene to grow. Hopefully, uh, Greg Wilson's lurking and he's checking this out. And yeah. whatever we can do to create uh, more events for Co2, that's what it's all about. Esports. Woo -woo. All right, Ipkai, let me put up the player car of overlay. Here we go. OMG Pop. He's going to start as uh, USF. And Jeslin is going to start as Okave. Do we have any further ado, or is it time to rock and roll? You guys ready in the chat? Cataclaws out there. What doth life? Zuppa dupa, dude. How about some? How about some claps? Let's go. Uh, this guy Lottie. Lottie's like, just start the game. That's what That'll the YouTube people now. are doing. They're like, enough of this jibber jabber. Just start the game. All right. Well, come on in, folks. Let's get this thing underway. Ipkai, I am in game. I'm paused at five. I'm looking at the American base. I'm ready when you are. All right, so we're going to unpause in three, two, one, unpause. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Orders, All <laughs> right, we got orders, boys. Fighting out of the northwestern corner of Famonville Approach. Wearing the blue trunks, representing Canada, playing the United States Forces winner of the North American Alienware Arena Cup. It's OMG Pop! And his opponent fighting out of the southeast in the red trunks, playing the Ober Commando vest. Representing Spain, winner of the North American European Cup, it's <laughs> Jesselin! Epcot, come on, man, where you at? Ah, 
All right. Okay, okay, okay. We got Volks Grenadiers capping points. We got Wehrmacht Panzer Schleppers coming out. You think he's going to do some scouting? I think so. It's nice, it's nice to have like a scouting unit. The, the Schwerer Wehrmacht Schlepper, as it's, as it's known as. So he's right, knocking down fences as well. That improves the mobility a bit, you know, so you don't have to vault over the fences. That's quite cool. Some, some I see some players do that. They're like yeah, running yeah, they, fences and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. have to decide. I mean, there's a couple things you can do. You can go scout. Like, often if it's against Soviets, they'll go check out if Tier 1's coming up. Um, sometimes they'll just go plow a bunch of uh, light cover type stuff, fences, to give their own units better mobility. And then other times you'll see them actually go into kind of enemy territory and try to plow over green cover spots. Yeah, that's, that's always the thing. I've seen some people as well, they like to like, park the truck in a gap, so then units can't go through it. It just stays there. So I've seen, oh, really? I've seen that on a couple and of then, Yeah. And then there's another option. You can also go and try to uh, disrupt the pathing of like the first combat, or or like some rifles might be trying to cap a point. You can try and push them around a bit, make it more difficult for them to like fight or cap. So a lot of options for o Okave early uh, schleppers. It's very risky though, because if you do lose the um, the Schwerenwurmach schlepper, you will actually be without the truck for three minutes, and that means you can't tech for three minutes. So you have to make do with your tier one. So you have to be really careful with it if you do do that. All right, we got the rear echelon troops garrisoning a house, but they're surrounded by bulks. Oddly, uh, Jeslin's on the wrong side of this cover. Um, he does have rifles coming in, though maybe he knew that that might happen. So now he's actually on the right side of cover. And uh, I, I didn't see any um, suppressing fire popped by the rear echelon troops, and I hear in the forums that that kind of got nerfed. Is it still very useful, or can you tell me a little bit more about that? The way it works now is that you have to use it when you have assistance from another rifleman squad, for example. So if you have a rifleman squad firing at a stone pirate squad that's charging in and you've got the rear echelon, then you'll be able to suppress them in time. It's because um, in Western Front armies, they actually added suppression back to the small arms weapons. So every gun has a small amount. Do you remember in, like, in Co-1 when the Volksrenders used to fire one volley of their cars and they used to pin uh, an engineer squad? Uh huh. So yeah, that's they, they would all go on their bellies. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Just for like a brief second, but yeah, they added the suppression values back to the guns. So if you stack the suppression with from the volley fire with regular squad fire as well, that should still help. But it's not not meant to be used 1v1 now. So that's the whole thing. It might be a little bit too weak though. Um, they do take a lot of damage while they're using it, so it does make them very vulnerable. Okay, Epkai, we're about four minutes in, and uh, how do you think this opening is going for both players? Do you think uh, you know Pop's doing much better, or is Okave perfectly comfortable, or you know, like how do you think it's going? Uh, it's hard to tell because with with uh, Okave, the, their strength is all just to like weather the storm until they can get their breakthrough units out, or their vet gets too difficult for the Americans to handle. Um, so. I think that that's part of the game plan as well. You, you try not to lose too many units. You try to get vet, and you also try and spend your munitions and your fuel wisely. So against Americans, a good good shot would probably be save up 90 ammo till you get a Panzer Shrek, mm -hmm. and then your first fuel purchase would be a Puma, because then that will help you with the the M15 and tier so craft. I I, I just uh, I just moved over to Jeslin and I saw that is he turning fuel into munitions early with this first truck? Yeah, or, or the like other way around. No, he's turning fuel into munitions, so well, he's halving his fuel, halving his fuel to boost his munitions income. Why do you think? Because uh, uh, I think he's trying to buy heavy? a Panzer Shrek. Okay. He's, yeah, he's buying a Panzer Shrek and he's buying the Flak Half Track instead. Flak Half Track is a bit better. Um, is actually much better at anti-infantry than the Puma is. But the issue is, is that it's not very good at anti-vehicle compared to the Puma. And when the M15 comes out, he'll be in a bit of trouble because that M15 can kill the flak half track quite easily. All right, well, he's got his Shrek, but... Uh, okay, well, the the flak half track is building for pop. Um, Jesselin beats him to the, the punch. I'm impressed that he was able to... Sacrifice fuel for munis and still get this Sonderkraftfahrzeug flak half track out it, uh, this quickly. Yeah, well, what I would do now, if I was thinking, was to switch it back to munitions to fuel and then <laughs> save up fuel so I can get a Puma out because I know that flak half track is coming and that's what I want. I really need a Puma and I have a, a Panzerschreck as well to help deal with this M15. 
So I need so like you need the double hit. I mean you could get a uh, raquette and woofer as well mm -hmm. to help, but because um, that's a, that's purely manpower cost as well. So Pop went four rifles, lieutenant, and now the um, the flak truck is coming out. Uh, this will be interesting to see uh, how these top players, Jeslin and OMG Pop, micro these relatively similar units. How would you? Could you point out the differences between the, the Wehrmacht Sonderkraftzeug uh, flak half-track and the American uh, 15A1 anti-aircraft half-track? Okay. okay, so the Okave uh, half-track, that one has to be stationary before it can fire its gun. The American one can actually fire its Brownings, the, the 50 cal machine guns on the move. It can't fire the autocannon. It has to be static for about two and a half seconds before it fires. The other thing wow, as well so is that it's actually got two separate guns. Then yeah, it's got it's got these 50 cal Brownings that suppress infantry. So it does, doesn't do too bad damage against uh, sorry the 251 doesn't do too bad damage against that M15. So he has to retreat it out a bit. So it's set up. The thing is, Whoa, what you want to do is what? Whoa, what just happened there? Did I guess some rifles got out of this house and then the Shrek explosion just killed them all? Did you see that? Yeah, they bunched up Whoa. and the splash, the splash killed them all when, as, the, as they were exiting the house. Yeah. It's so yeah, rare really to see players of this caliber lose whole squads like that. That was just a tough break for Pop. Yeah, you got to be really careful because when units come out of the house, they, they tend to be really bunched up. And uh, they, they tried to tone down the um, the AOE damage a lot on squads. But the problem is that, that they can't fix it that well because of the way the squad AI behaves. It bunches up a lot. When it goes near cover or as it goes out of doors and things. So you have to be exceptionally careful. You know, if you see your squads tending to bunch up a lot, you're gonna have to move them immediately or just retreat if you know there's a unit that can do so much AOE damage in one go. Like, like that mortars. particular house, were there other doors he could have gotten out of? There's a back door. There's a so, back door in the So door, yeah. we can only blame Pop for just getting out of the wrong side. He should have got out of this rear door. That would have yeah. saved his squad. For sure. That would have but saved it, it was an unlucky break, but one that could have been avoided. Yeah. Could have All right, well, good. the Shreks are going to attack this uh, anti-aircraft half-track with a rear armor hit. Does about 40% damage, you know, no engine crit. Um, Sh Shreks getting crits. Does it ever happen? Does the vehicle have to be lo low on health or...? To get, to get vehicle crits, it, it has to be under a certain amount of... Um health certain percentage and then the damage has to occur and then when it's under that certain percent then you might get a vehicle crit like a damaged engine or a damaged gun or something but um if it's full health that should not happen okay which it was and so now he's he's hopped out the crew is repairing it now this crew is triple vet but the vehicle has no vet i mean how how much vet do they need to get can they get more so that the vehicle vets up i mean i'm still yeah, not yeah, basically, crystal clear on so, it all. so basically right the, the vehicle crew they can be VET3, however, the amount of XP they gain, like the experience points, it continues on after they get to VET3. But how do we so see that? You you can't see it. for the, You can't see the individual amount of XP the crew has, unfortunately. It's only manifested okay. when they crew a vehicle. So, like, for, say, for example, it takes 1,000 XP to get to VET3 for the vehicle crew, and yeah. the, the half-track needs 2,000. Uh -huh. They can still for two thousand for vet one, so to speak. so that crew has one thousand. That vehicle needs two thousand for vet one, but okay. they can still accumulate. I get it now. I, I just yeah. didn't perceive yeah. that this crew with their triple vet was not actually capped at what it took. You know, like they're still gaining vet that you don't see, yeah, which all is squads not do as well. very intuitive. Yeah, all squads do as well. Um, if you have like a vet three rifleman squad, I think they would have more XP than a vet three vehicle crew. So if you get like, um, a Sherman out at the start and you put like your Vet 3 rifle squad in, you will have, I think, probably a Vet 1 or a Vet 2 a Sherman squad off the bat. Okay. So, so people have to learn these ratios because maybe at some point in the game, you know, it might be worth it to sacrifice like a vetted rifle squad just to give some vet immediately to a Sherman that just came out. Yeah, you, I mean, you don't sacrifice the squad because you can get it back out of the vehicle. Yeah, but I mean, well. sacrifice it from being on the fighting field. Yeah. You know, like put yeah. it in the Sherman. So yep. now we have two flak half tracks from OMG Pop, and we only have this one from. Um... Oh wait, did he lose one? Yeah, I got killed. It drove straight too close to these um, the M15s. Oh no, he's just out of it. Oh, but the 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 ver the the, the, the Oberkommando Oster was a smoking wreck. Yeah, near, near okay, the field got, got, got destroyed. It's, it's, it's... All right, and so he stopped converting, but for the for the longest time he was always converting fuel to mu munitions. Did you? Yeah. Does that surprise you, or do you think that was a mistake? 
Yeah, I think he should have tried to get get back to fuel, get Puma as well to help him out, because I think the Treks alone is not going to help him. Squad. Try and get it to move, start that, uh, get it to get the M15 to start moving. That way, the auto cannon can't fire. Then you drive in with the Puma, because while it's that, while it's moving, it can't fire that auto cannon that does damage to the Puma. So you have to do sort of like, so I get it to move. This is the big, the big thing with that unit. So these fall sherms have managed to harass the right hand side and keep Jeselin connected to his fuel. Oh, they leave right before they wipe this um, ammo flag, which took took a long time to get that low, actually. Maybe they could have stayed for another second or two to white it, but they are chased off by the American flak half-track. And um, the other half-track and this lieutenant and its bar have just, you know, there's an LMG rifle squad here, too. They've pretty much got Jeslin's infantry pinned into his base. Yeah, and they're... Uh, the M1919A6 19, gives you a special ability on riflemen. Is that when they're out of combat, they can switch to this defensive stance, mm -hmm. and that allows them to. Um, it, it looks like it do it, but that allows them to suppress squads as they yeah. come in. So they turn into suppression machines, uh, suppression platforms. So Jeslin's now trying to push left a little bit, and I guess he killed a squad over there. I guess took OMG yeah, Pop a bit by on. surprise. Uh huh. Okay. So, I mean, that's, I mean, U.S. doesn't have to build anything, so you could lose your early rear echelon and never build engineers again, right? I mean, since crews can repair vehicles and you don't have to build tech structures... Yeah, right? you don't really need to replace them. Um, the weird. only thing is that they can build fighting positions, though, and tank traps, so that's something okay. that if you, if you do need them... <laughs> if, you, right. if, if you're desperate for fighting positions, tank traps, things like that, then you probably would want to replace them. I th I think though that like the diversity, and the the you know it's little things like this for the U S that build up little advantages. You know the fact that vehicles have crew and they can hop out and repair themselves. You don't necessarily need to build your tech structures. I think all of these le little advantages have made this just like an extremely powerful faction. And I'm wondering if um, it will get nerfed, for example, like overall. Um, that's hard to say. I mean. Funny, funny thing is like during during alpha testing as well. Probably not allowed to speak about, but I will anyway. Is that it was thought that <laughs> Americans were, out, were actually a little bit weaker. Huh. Um, at one point. Why do you think? I, I don't know. I think maybe it's just taking. Um, I think there must have been some change. I know the volley fire. That was that was changed in between alpha and live, so it was really strong. And this M15 actually wasn't in the in the lieutenant building. It was actually in the captain building instead. Uh huh for a long time so it's probably probably that really i think the switch of units okay so well volley fire suffered a bit of a nerf so we'll see and and you know maybe i think that okava okave is the most different of the two new factions from any company of heroes that we've ever played before so it, it would make sense that it would take players a long time to try to figure them out yeah, I mean, with with Americans, they, they're still sort of there's still f familiarities with you know their see which one counterpart. You know, they've got the riflemen, they've got the, the BAR upgrades, um, some really strong light vehicles as well, um, really strong infantry. So there's still some and, and you know still some similarities. So it's not that difficult for say a new player uh, to uh, play a new to Company of Heroes two, but they play Company of Heroes one, and they're like, oh, these Americans, they're very similar to you know how I used to play them. It's not that much different, you know. Initially, I mean, um, their their mid and late game is a little bit different though, uh, and the commanders obviously are different. But uh, other than that, I think you know they're they're probably a bit easier to pick up as well. Well, we saw Twister, you know, back pretty much into his base against Loveness in uh, the finals of the ESL Launch Cup. Uh, I I am, I am never uh, too quick to count the Okave out. Um, we have a uh, commander choice from OMG Pop that ends with the priest that he could actually bring in now. I wonder if he'll decide to do that. That would, might be nice to see the priest firing away. Um, it, he's, his two half tracks are now single vet, so these crews have, you know, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but they've got so much vet. This one's now double vet. So this is just an awesome crew in this one um, M15A1. Yeah. Air, yeah, you could even you could even take that crew out and put it swap crews as well if you get like a new vehicle. And you could do that as well. That's that's another option. You got a lot of options with these vehicle crews. They're really um really cool. So, do you know what OMG Pop's late game 
might consist of, maybe just from watching some of his replays that he posted. No, this is this seems to be it. Usually doesn't get this far I've, um, when I've seen him play. It's always he gets <laughs> uh -oh. these LMGs. Well, this <laughs> is a new beast, man. He's fighting Jeslin. You know, th this yeah. is a new beast, so he might not have. They they might not have ever met on ladder. In fact, I, I I mean I doubt it. One's American, one's European. They might play at different times. Yeah, exactly. So I mean I'm not, I I have seen this. So like he gets he gets the two flag half tracks. He gets the LMG, the the 1919 A6. Uh, 30 cals and then enter suppression stance and just pins the OK OKV player or the Vimark player in their home sector. They can't actually get out. So you see right, these suppressive rifles doing so much. To and they kill that one vetted up Sturm Pioneer squad. That's a that's a drag. Jeslin didn't retreat quite fast enough. We have a M36 Jackson tank destroyer on the way. And I mean, are there any tanks to destroy? Why would Pop build that when he's fighting pretty much primarily infantry? Yeah, it's an interesting pick. I mean, I would have got something with more anti-infantry, to be honest. Um, because like, I've still got a bit of even a Sherman with HE shells or mm -hmm. uh, the M8A1 Scott, the, the little Howitzer motor carriage. Either one of those are good good picks now. Well, that's that's a nice snipe from the Raketenwerfer. for he managed to pick off that that double vet um, anti-aircraft gun from really long range. And now the Raketenwerfer is um, quadruple vet. And, but Jeslin throws in GG. What? Why? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it wasn't over. You know, he still had, you know, 200 odd points on the on the ticker. And yeah, he just got a good kill, too. Yeah, killed that one vehicle. And he's still I mean, he lost two stone pyos, but I don't think that's a big setback. You know, this he is could a, easily... a quintuple vet racket and verifer. Why not maybe try to push out behind it? At least just, you know, keep pushing to the right. Surely these um, rifles uh, with their bar, we're about to be chased off. He could get that right VP, and you know, holding one VP, as we saw with Twister last week, is is plenty. You know, when you're down, you're not out with Okave. And I mean, he doesn't know what Pop build next. And I think Pop's build is kind of a mistake. You know, like I don't think this tank destroyer would have helped him very much. Jesslyn doesn't know that, of course. But you know, why not give your your opponent the opportunity to make a mistake and hang in there as long as you can? So. That's, I don't know, I mean, these guys are far better at this game than I am. And I guess, you know, he, he probably knew he was beaten. But um, I would have liked to have seen him hang in it a little bit longer. We can chalk one up for the Americans. And Ipkai, do you think we're going to see, like, an Americans route here? I mean, that's that's the general feeling you get from the people, you know, in the forums. You know, Okave, underpower, blah, blah. Do you, I, you think... We're, I think I think a lot of it is still, you know, this learning phase of this new function because they are very different, and I think people just don't hang in it long enough. Because that that last game, I, I thought example. like, yeah, I thought like, did you need to surrender? I didn't think it was that bad, you know. So uh, it's a chip in a chair, I, man. That's what the poker yeah. players say. A chip in a chair. If you've got one chip to your name and a seat at the table, you still got a chance. So uh, perhaps. Some of these Okave players need to work on their morale and endurance. I mean, I think Twister really showed us something yeah. last weekend. Loveness is a great player, but, you know, maybe yeah. like mid to late game, Loveness made some little mistakes. He didn't capitalize on his ammo advantage and so forth, and uh, Twister was able to come back into that, and that sort of amazed us all. So, um, I don't know. Maybe we'll see some comebacks in the future here. That was game one, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go to the break and load up game two, and we will be right back after this message. See ya. See ya.